is a Wulstaube, and in today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make it. Hello friend, I'm Milena with Thimble and Plume, and we are historical reenactors with a love for German Renaissance clothing and a love for sharing the things that we have learned over the years to help you level up your clothing game. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this Wulstaube, and it's quick and easy to make, so you should be able to finish it in an afternoon. But here's a disclaimer. While this Wulstaube will give you a perfectly period silhouette, the methods that we are using to create it focus more on speed and ease of construction and do use modern methods. You can, of course, do this completely by hand, but this tutorial today will be using a hybrid of machine and hand finishing techniques. If you would like a more historically plausible method of construction, check out the Curious Rouse video that we have linked in the description box below. Okay, let's get making. You will need a pattern. You can make your own, or if you want, we have this available in our Etsy shop. The most important thing is you wanna make sure it's at least two pieces with a roll and a cap. Two pieces of white linen that are 24 inches or 61 centimeters in length and a width of 16 inches or 41 centimeters. Thread, both machine and hand sewing thread. Stuffing, you want it to be machine washable, then use polyfiberfill sewing kit and sewing machine. So the way that I work, I prefer to mark my stitching lines. So in order to facilitate this, I prefer to work without seam allowances. While this pattern does come with seam allowances included, I'm going to be cutting them all off. You can choose to use a pattern that includes your seam allowance, or you can cut them off and follow along with me as I do it my way. So in order to mark both sides of the fabric at the same time, I have laid out some wax tracing paper. I do get this from Richard the Thread. They are nice large sheets and they're wax, so they stay on throughout the whole process. So you do have to be careful of the color that you use to make sure that it doesn't bleed and show up on the final product. All right, so what I do is I line up my ruler. So I'm gonna mark my half. Basically what I'm doing is I'm marking out my half inch seam allowance. Um, from that side, I'm going to lay down that, I'll make sure I leave some at the top and I'll and do the same thing. Basically this is just giving me a guideline of where I can lay it out to start with. Cool. Then I can just lay this here. And now I know that I'm going to need an inch when I lay this out coming this way. You can pin it or you can use weights, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. So now, got that kind of laid down. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark out this half inch seam allowance here. Now that I know it's gonna fit, okay. Mark it a half inch seam allowance here. And I'm gonna mark my half inch seam allowance up here. Okay, then again, just all right. So now, since I've already traced that, that can also be the seam allowance for that one. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and trace around this edge like so. And then to repeat on this edge here, on this edge here, oops. You know, when all else fails, do the thing you're supposed to do. Use a straight edge. <laughs> I'm gonna go boop in here. Thank you. 
uh, we were, we're using a facing for this pattern. You could cut the facing on pretty much whatever grain. So I would just do it in a way that works with the amount of fabric that you want to use. I just want to stick on this little piece of fabric. So instead of cutting it on the fold, I'm going to cut out two pieces with seam allowance. So just to make it clear what I'm doing here, I'm laying out my pattern pieces, tracing around them, and marking my seam allowance half inch away. Now I know I didn't do the, each one in that specific order, but that is typically what we do. So it's just laying out the piece, tracing around it, and adding my half inch seam allowance and tracing that out. Okay, so now that is done. I always like to double check and make sure I did get my marks on the other side, fantastic. Um, if it doesn't work, we can always go back and retrace them with a wheel. So now that we've got this all laid out, marked, and seam allowances marked as well, I'm going to cut around each piece at that seam allowance that is half inch away from the seam line. Okay, so the next step is we're going to stitch the curved top seam. This is the seam that runs along our forehead. So I will, I'm just gonna give it a couple quick pins. Now what I like to do, make sure I'm in the camera here. I like to go in the seam line here and just check that I'm going in on the back and I am. Just go in like that. And that way I make sure that when I pin it, this one's easy because they were cut together. But you know, it's, oh, you know, when you're doing this, if you add another piece to another piece, it's good to just check that you're going through the same stitch line. All right, so that's ready. I'm gonna take it over to the machine. That seam is pressed, or excuse me, that seam is sewn. So now we're going to press. All right, now that you've got that seam sewn, we are now going to press it open. Um, what I like to do first is, is I press it flat first. This is supposed to press the threads into the fabric and everything. That was what I was trained. Um, so. It seems to work, so why not? It's not broke. All right, so then I always like to press open first no matter what seam finish I'm doing because it just gives you much cleaner um, seam lines. So I press from the back first and I turn it over to the front. Now I'm pressing on a ham. It's just a little ham that I have. Um, if you don't have one, just do it on a paper or you, or um, do it on a flat surface or on a towel. It isn't super important for this, but like I can like see how I can do this and not have to go over the curve if I was laying on a flat surface. So now we've got that like that. See how it's nice and flat there. So now you want to finish this seam. I like a flat fell seam because it is the one of the faster ones that you can do. All right, so I'm going to cut down one side. Since I'm doing a flat fell seam, I'm going to lay this down again and press the longer side flat. It does seem like it's a little extra work, but being able to press it open first does make a difference. So now we're just going to finish off the flat fell seam by folding over the longer seam allowance around the shorter seam allowance and it'll be finished. I'm going to use a, a whip stitch. If you're unsure of how to do this, we do have a video that walks you through all the steps and that is available in the description box below. This is called again a flat fell seam. Another name for it is a flat felled seam with an ED. Both of those terms are correct. So now I am choosing to do this by hand, but you are welcome to run this through the machine if you prefer. It's totally up to you. Okay, 
Now, here's something very important I'm going to tell you right now. When you are doing this, this is going to be my forehead side. I'm going to start stitching when I close this off. Actually, I'm going to start at the seam line because later on, I want to get rid of that bulk when I add my facing into here so that'll allow me to clean it up really nice. So I'm going to start right here. I've got my um, cap sewn together, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add on my roll. I'm going to put my right sides together here. Now remember, I'm going to use the seam line. I'm going to put the center to the seam line. I'm going to take my other roll pleat, uh, roll, and this time I'm going to put this one so that its right side is to the wrong side. So basically what I'm doing is I'm sandwiching in, you can see here, I'm sandwiching in uh, the cap between the two roll pieces. Okay, so something I'm going to note when I stitch, I'm going to start right exactly on the seam line. I'm not going to stitch down this part of the seam allowance. I'm going to start my needle right there and I'm going to go all the way to the other side and I'm going to end it the other side right there. All right, so I am carefully going to put that needle down right where those seam lines join and then take my pin out. I'm going to go a few stitches. I know my hand gets in the way here. <laughs> Uh, so I apologize, but I'm, I go a few stitches, back stitch, and then continue on. So as I approach the end, I slow down, and then when I get a few uh, lengths away, I go ahead and turn the wheel by hand in order to make sure I get it right on that spot, and then I will back stitch a bit. Sorry that my hand was in the way. As you can see, I'll show you here that it ends right where those two seam lines join. And then we will press for success. So just press that seam line open all the way around. So we've pressed it. It'll be fun. So. This is what we're looking like now, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to here and I'm gonna clip right here, right up to my seam line. Right to the stitching. Don't clip the stitching, obviously, but right to it, okay? I'm gonna repeat on the other side right to that stitching. And now we're going to do a burrito, okay? We're gonna make a burrito with this. So here's our cap on the inside. What I wanna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pull that in over here. I'm gonna kind of pull, fold that back so it's out of the way. Do the same on this side, want that out of the way. And I'm gonna roll this up to the inside here. Make sure everything is kind of tucked in. And I'm going to bring this over, pushing all that fabric out of the way. And then I'm going to end this here. I'm going to end up stitching this closed now. Crazy, right? You got to make sure you get everything out of the way. You don't want to catch any of that in the seam. Just check. 
I'll make sure. And then I'll do this other side. I'll start on the other side again and get that pinned real, out of the way real good. So yeah, we need to leave this open so that we can turn it and then stuff it. All right, so then go ahead and just stitch. All right, so I'm just kind of feeling as I go to make sure that I'm not catching any of the cap in there, making sure none of that fabric has gotten in there. When I get, I've got my little opening that I'm leaving here. So what I want to do now, I want to back stitch here. And then skip over to my next section. Back stitch there. I like to backstitch a couple times because when you stuff it, sometimes it'll come undone, so. And then I'm just gonna finish off the end. Again, I'm just also gonna be feeling to make sure that I don't get any of the cap fabric stitched into it at all. Backstitch at the end. Okay, so we've taken it off the machine. We've got this all stitched. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it inside out. Now I'm going to trim it down. Um, instead of clipping, I like to trim because clipping tends to weaken the fabric. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to pull this out. All right, let's see, I've got it all stuffed in there. Um, oh, that came in stitched a little. Okay, so I had a boo-boo here. Um, it must have come, un come came unstitched a little bit. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna reinforce it. I think I probably clipped in too far, yeah. Yeah, see, all this came unstitched. See, I made a boo-boo. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and, and I'm just gonna restitch around here, close that all off again. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Let's see. So I went in and I fixed that. All right, so now let's turn it and see how it looks. There we go, that's better, more better. I can play with getting my corners pulled out a little bit more. You can use a pen, you can use a stick to kind of poke it in there. Um, but it should come out something like that. Okay, so next we're going to put on the facing. So I've already, I already went ahead and just stitched my facing together in the center and then I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I do want to go ahead and press it open. I'm gonna go ahead and clip it. And do both at the same time. Okay. Then I'm gonna take the front of the cap, the forehead side, and lay this down here, right sides together. Pin in place.
I'm not stitching all the way to the end. I'm going to start it where my seam line starts. So when I get here, I'm going to I'm going to take my seam allowance. I'm going to fold it back out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew right until I hit the edge of that to where that seam allowance is. I'm going to stop. I'm going to make sure I get right in there and then I'm going to back stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it out. Push my seam allowances to the other side, then I'm going to put my needle right in right in that seam line, right on the other side of the seam allowances. So what I've done now is I've gotten my seam allowances so that they're not stitched down. And this gives me freedom <clears throat> to move them in any direction that I want. Come right to that edge of that. And then I'm gonna back stitch. Once again, we're going to go ahead and press. Anytime you are sewing, you want to press as often as possible. Press for success. Press it flat, press the seam allowances open. So this is, this is clear. So what I wanna do is I'm going to, I wanna snip this, because I wanna get some of this bulk out of here. And see now, now what I can do, I have, control to play with my seam allowances and I can flip them any which way I want. This side is fine being pressed open like that. This side though is a little bulky so I'm just gonna I'm actually just gonna trim this out. I'm going to go ahead and press it. Let's go ahead and grade our seams now. So what I want to do is I'm going to leave this one a little longer. I'm going to grade this one a little shorter. So the way that I figure out which one to cut is I'm going to cut the one that's closer to the outside. So that's the outside seam allowance. So I'm going to cut, I want that to kind of block off that. So I'm going to cut this one here. I'm going to take my ties. I'm going to put them. I want to put them right in the center here. I want to make sure that I'm, so I'm coming down with my cut edge. I'm putting them right in the center. There is an X on the pattern, but it's pretty much right in the center. Um, there's like a little right there. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna stitch them down. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Again, this is I'm on the front. This is the front. I'm sewing, I'm sewing this to the right side. Now you you can stitch this by hand or you I'm gonna try running this through the machine. Alright, because these are fairly narrow. I just went ahead and did a couple of, of stitches back and forth here and here. Now we get to finish everything. All right. Now before you go through and finish everything, it's always a good idea to check the fit of any garment that you're working on. So once you have, go ahead and add your ties, stuff your roll, and then um, you can fold the edges in place so that you can tell where they are, but don't actually sew them down yet. Put it on your head and check the fit. You'll notice that this comes pretty far down on my forehead. We've done this for a reason and we actually will be talking about that in the next video, but just know that that is on purpose. The other thing you'll notice about our pattern is that we do the ends of our haube overlap like that. That is also something that we have found that we like. So the third thing I'm going to say is put it on and look at yourself in the mirror and assess the fit. 
turn to the side. Is the roll the size that you want it to be? Look at the angle that it's sitting on your head. Do you like the angle? If not, now is the time to make any adjustments. If you're happy with the, the fit, great, keep going. If not, make your adjustments and then continue with the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this on my fold line. Not quite there, there we go. That's more like it. Press it down. Then I'm gonna press down along this side. Now this is linen, so you can give it a quick finger press, which makes it a little easier. And I can come in with my iron and give it a nicer finger press. Um, fold this a second time. When you're at this edge, so this is the where you've uh, clipped it next to the roll. So what we're going to do is we want to fold this raw edge. We're going to fold it like a little triangle in and over. So that way it's completely enclosed in there and it isn't going to run or fray. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch this edge. You can do it by machine if you want. I'm going to do it by hand. Okay, go ahead and do the other side. Once that's done, we're now going to finish off our facing. So the next thing we're gonna do is trim down the seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so we've, we've clipped our facing down. I mean, I got one more edge to clip here. I don't need this really large seam allowance here, so I'm gonna clip that out of the way. Now, it is a little bit wide here. Um, I don't want the facing hanging over, so I am gonna fudge it a little bit and fold it in just on this section here um, but I do want it wider as it goes through so I'm going to enlist some helpful pins here So now, again, you can go and stitch this by hand or by machine, whatever your preference. Guess what? We're almost there. Last step. So now we need our, I'm using poly fiber fill. Um, you can use wool, um, but if you use polyester fiber fill, you can just toss this in the washing machine. Okay, I'm gonna take some fluff. So when you're stuffing something, you want to kind of get your fluff like separated a little bit because otherwise it clumps in there. You don't want it to be clumpy. You just start stuffing it in. I usually have, I don't know where my, uh, so I'm just going to use a paintbrush. <laughs> just need something that you can kind of poke through. Okay, once you have it stuffed, we're now going to close it off. So where that opening was, go ahead and uh, fold over both edges. 
pinch them together and pin them down. I am putting the pins in parallel. That seems to work pretty well for me. And make sure everything is lined up properly and you're not getting one side longer than the other. And once that's done and pinned, then you're going to close it with a small whip stitch that's very close to the edge. Okay, so once that's done, go ahead and double up your thread on your needle. Pull the two ends together and with a tight whip stitch, secure the two ends together. Once you're done here, that's it. Your Wolstauba is finished. Happy stitching!